But eventually, you know, or, 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 or um, what we're going to see is just people just commenting on this and giving their opinion, which I love. I love yeah. to see what different people are going to say and think about this, especially on in our comment section, in our videos and everything. But um, I don't know. Again, we're going to defer this to the people out there, you know, especially for the YouTubers and stuff. We gave our opinion. What do y'all think in the comment section, you know, of this? Do you think he went too far? Do you think it even backfired? 65K one day. No, really he got no. 200K subscribers I, for, for somebody that. He should at least have 500,000 views on this video. Yeah. That's just me. And this being said, I mean, this doesn't, I ain't about to cancel Vic Mensa. I like him as an artist. I like the music he throws out. I'm not a big fan of this song, even if I just listen to it and don't see the video. It's not my cup of tea, but go ahead and, and, and experiment in your creativity. And when you get back to hip hop, I'll be here to support you. Man, they going in on him too, boy. You got to read the comments. <laughs> yeah, he, if he does these things often and not, maybe not to this extent. It always seems to backfire on him. People yeah. don't receive it the way yeah. I guess he wants to throw it out there, but yeah. Uh, he's throwing off the persona of fuck what everybody thinks. I don't know if it's really hurting him behind mm -hmm. the scenes or what, but I mean, he's going to continue to do what he do. Yeah, yeah, man. But you're tuning to the Hip Hop Uncensored Podcast with your brother, Old God and Sandman, going in today on this Friday night. I want everybody listening. Do not forget to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, make sure that you hit us with that five star rating and leave a comment. Let us know how much you enjoy the podcast. Sandman, you said Eddie Griffin had a statement out there you wanted to rap about. Yeah, man. Anytime Eddie Griffin, Paul Mooney, any of the OGs say anything, I pay attention to it and like to bring it and turn it into content if I can, because it's such always an awesome conversation within the comment section with us and everything. So they were the Daily Beast. I guess they're a very popular Twitter site. They got mm -hmm. like a million some of my uh, subscribers and things like that. They said, um, gave criticism to Kanye West on exploiting, quote unquote, the church clothes. Um, so they said, is Kanye West exploiting religion for profit with his pricey church clothes line? Now, he does Sunday service every Sunday where they get a bunch of people together and do some dope ass music mm -hmm. where I guess he has his big guard. We saw that wild shit that he puts. And now he's putting it for sale, calling it church clothes. Eddie Griffin had a response to that. He said, religion has been exploiting people for profit for a long time. Oh, God, I know you love this topic. Uh, I know you love this. Topic. Yeah. Yeah. What you think about that? man? Yeah. 100% accurate. Uh, definitely. I mean, you know, ultimately, when you look at, you know, and no disrespect to anyone in the church, but even this over the time that I've been alive, these people have been promised, you know, hope, been promised, been made to look at something in the sky to fix their problems, to save them, to rescue them. When all in, in real reality is it has to be them who has to get themselves out of the situation. It has to be them who's going to turn their life around. It has to be them who get themselves off drugs. It has to be them who's going to get themselves off cigarettes. We can't get into the point where, you know, where, where you know, um, looking something outside of us to fix things. And how's that exploitation? Because, you one, you know, they take a 10 percent. Most churches take 10% from people and they say, you give me this to the Lord mm -hmm. to do such and such. Mm -hmm. And you really doing nothing but feeding this one man and woman and their family, putting them through college, Talk about letting it. them drive the bends. While a lot of times you got a lot of churches that do a lot of great things, but you got some churches who just siphon money out of the community in the name of the Lord, in the name of Jesus, and don't give anything back. To me, that's highway robbery and it's going on. On such a wide, you know, uh, um, scale all across America, all through the world, yeah, it could probably be wrong for Kanye. I mean, whatever. But this is this is America. This is what it is. You're allowed to set up markets. You're allowed to go into church and make a church clothes brand and sell it if people are going to buy it. Can't well, nobody stop you. That's what I'm going to talk to you real quick about. Oh God. Kanye West, do you mm -hmm. have a problem with him doing that? I mean, you guess you were about to start going in on. No, nah, no, nah, I don't. Okay, because nope. I don't either. Right. I mean, if he's going to go out there and do his thing, it's no different than an offer pot getting thrown around. And nobody got a problem with that. If people are going to buy it and they like it, yeah. let them do it. My thing is, why are you giving criticism for it when you've watched it go throughout time? It happened and happened and happened and it never been a problem. But now mm -hmm. that this brother's doing it and, and what people have a problem. Do you have a problem with the Sunday service? Because a lot of people, Christians in particular, mm -hmm. they don't like it. They think that of it's course. mocking God. They, they don't like that they, that that he's out there doing that, exploiting right. the clothes. They have a real big problem with that. Anytime I've ever heard Kanye West do Sunday service, I've just heard some good fucking music. Right. And I vibe to it for 10, 15 minutes. I wouldn't get into the worshiping part, but you hear people calling it a cult. You hear people saying this, saying that. You got some Does people it deserve the criticism? Who are real dogmatic. 
about certain things. You got some churches, they don't let women wear pants. You got certain they, they, some, certain churches go are real superstitious with a lot of things. And they think that this may be devil music. We grow up like that. Oh, this is yeah. this, that and third, which is it's ludicrous at the end of the day. So I'm not surprised to see people that are going to say that. For one, they think he's a secular artist. He's out there worshiping the devil and whatever. They're they going to think this all. So anything that he does, especially bringing it into the church, if it's not under their moniker of what they're used to seeing, the white Jesus on the wall and whatnot, and, and all those um, the white figures in the Bible, they're not going to buy anything outside of that. That's all they're used to seeing, you know what I mean, in, in America's churches. And this is what it is. This isn't us bashing anybody's faith or anybody's religion because there's a lot of good people who celebrate and practice faith very heavily, but they also practice what they preach. They also practice how they walk. And there's a mm -hmm. level of respect that you got to give somebody, no matter what religion they practice, if they genuinely practice and walk what they read and what they believe in each and every day. Yo, man, yeah. I respect you. Yo, queen, I respect you. I respect that because, hey, if that's what you believe in, it's getting you somewhere more power to you. We all got to believe in something. This is the hypocritical motherfucker. This is the ones that mm -hmm. want to just sit down and throw out some rhetoric and some nonsense and throw out this false thing and then we'll give you no real explanation as to as to why or what that we got the problem with. And these people right here have a problem with Kanye West gaining revenue off of his concerts on Sunday yep. and trying to throw religion into it to kind of mask it as whack. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, you know, do your thing, man. And, um, you know, I'm interested, even though I ain't really watch it too heavy, this little Instagram clips, like whatever, but, um, mm -hmm. you know, I don't see nothing wrong with what he's doing. He be rocking, man. Them, them, you yeah. know, Kanye West, can, he's a genius. He's a musician. Mm -hmm. So he got nothing but musicians around him, and they do his thing. They, You know how people do, though. They always going to have reason to, to naysay or somebody. Speaking of musicians, and speaking, we know that um, Kanye West, you know, um, produced Nas' last album. Oh, shit. Nas dropped a new shit. one. He dropped a new album saying, man, I got to put you on, on blast, put you on blast, put you on the spot, Talk I should say, for this. Was Nas' new album whack? Yeah, I didn't like it. Was it whack? Was it whack? I didn't like it. <laughs> I didn't like it, man. I didn't man. like it. Um, and I love Nas. I always will. Illmatic is one of the greatest bodies of work of all time, not only lyrically, but production-wise. When you got the level of producers he had on that album. That shit was how long ago? Very long. Yeah. We were children. We were children. That doesn't take away from the genius <laughs> of it. So, therefore, he will always have my respect. But this last album, um, I wasn't that impressed with it really didn't like it i gave it an honest chance a couple times and i just wasn't just wasn't vibing with it man i just couldn't connect with it and i connected with the kanye west joint a little more than i connected with this one and people gave that slack and people didn't like yeah, the other yeah, album thanks. so i want to kind of throw this to you and ask you this and kind of compare it to the boxer now we know a lot of boxers some the greatest boxer of all time sometimes they go a little past their prime and i was hearing whispers and it's wild because i would just blast from this but yeah. gotta ask you the question should rappers hang it up if they see that albums aren't doing what they did if they're just not getting that <sighs> that that magic that they had in yeah. past time should they hang up the gloves so to speak or the mic and just kind of go off into the sunset and do different things well i heard um rick ross just briefly him on um i think hot nine seven and he was talking about him making the port of miami um uh, too and um him trying to find a balance of making it with the music that he wants to make or making the music that the people necessarily want to hear at the time. You know what I mean? Or the streets want to hear is the words that he actually used. But um, I just think that it's a lot of times people, it, 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 it's weird with that Nas, because it's like you thinking that it's going to be one way and then it does, just doesn't live up to the hype. So I would have to just sit back and say like, yeah, it could come a time where, you know, people are so out of touch or maybe they just not putting their heart into it as much you saying boat was on hot 97 he was talking he said look man i pretty much accomplished everything i won all this olympus i won every race so i just don't have the passion mm -hmm. i think once the passion leaves i'm not saying that i left for nas but you should walk away from that and maybe get into something else invest in but yeah, if you come out all that. He's yeah, in yeah he's into all that so maybe you know he you know just wasn't he just didn't put his all into that i don't think that it takes away. I was kind of joking yesterday saying, man, Jay was right, man. That's a, he was right about oh, Nas. one hot album every 10 year average, but it's just like, no. you know, <laughs> I, I was, I was with Jay for that battle anyway. So it is what it is. But anyway, yeah, I just think the album just didn't um, live up to expectations. It was very disappointing. Nas as well. Yeah. And um, I, that's all I could say about that. You said you was on Jay's side. I was on Jay's side to a certain, I was on Jay's side too, but Ether was a problem. Who won? Who won? Who won that beef? Who won the beef? 
I mean, yeah, who, or between those two songs, what's better, Ether or Takeover? Yeah. Ether. <laughs> but I love Takeover. It came out after, yeah. I love Takeover. But yeah. Ether, the way it hit, the way he came out, and no one that had ever at that time hit Jay Z the way Nas was hitting him. And it was just one of those moments. It's like, whew. so would you say that? I remember they did the Hot 97, the, um, the poll. It was like 51 Nas, 41 Jay Z at the time. You agree with that? 51, 51, 41? 40, 51, 49, my bad. Yeah. 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 <sighs> yeah but I mean, who won, the, who won the fucking war? I mean, and neither one of them really hurting. Nobody so. really won the war like that, I would say. I mean, people would probably say Jay Z because they, you know, Jay, pretty, not that he's under him, but we saw what happened. After that, Jay Z's prophecies kind of lived out a little more when it comes to his rap career. Now he had a better rap career, I would say, than Nas. More successful rap career than I would say was Nas. People were going to debate um, all day long who's a better rapper. And when it comes down to the head-to-head showdown, like I said, I just gave Nas fifty-one forty-nine. So even though Jay Z's on top of my list as a better rapper than Nas, not high. I mean, not by for much, but he is. He is what it is. 